Hello class, welcome to the social psychology chapter. This is one of my favorite chapters. We have a bunch of different things to cover. First, there will be a little mini lecture on faces, impressions, and attributions, just some sort of basic concepts from social psych. Then we'll look at stereotyping. And then I have a little section for you on political and moral psychology, uh, which is not typically in any kind of textbook, but I find it really fascinating and very relevant for today's climate. And then finally, we'll end with a big section on conformity, obedience, and the power of the situation. You may have heard of Solomon Ash or Stanley Milgram or Philip Zimbardo and the Stanford Prison Experiment. That's what that is. So let's go ahead and jump into our first section on faces, impressions, and attributions. So um, you probably heard the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover, right? And that phrase is supposed to mean that you can't uh, just look at somebody and know exactly um, everything about them, right? That you may have a wrong impression. Um, I'm sorry to say to you that um, the snap judgments that we do take about people, that we do make about people, often are correct. Um, in psychology, we call this thin slices of behavior, that when you see somebody for just a short period of time, just within a few seconds, that we tend to make pretty accurate judgments about others. Not always, obviously. Um, but pretty good. So um, an example of the of the research on this, there was a study where students watched a lecturer uh, for 30 seconds. And it turned out that their ratings of the professor, of the professor's um, personal attributes um, and characteristics were identical. Well, maybe I shouldn't say identical, but they were very much the same as uh, the ratings by the lecturer's actual students who had the students for the whole semester. So you saw the person for 30 seconds uh, on a video, and then you saw the person in real life um, uh, for the whole semester, and the ratings were the same. So that tells us that thin slices of behavior are actually relatively good um, at giving us information. And this does make some sense. Uh, we would uh, have evolved to be able to um, interpret other people, uh, kindness, warmth, safety, intelligence, um, uh, pro-social uh, attitudes uh, pretty well, because that would be helpful to us. So let's think a little bit about facial expressions. Um, that's part of those thin slices of behavior. So babies absolutely love looking at faces the moment that they're born. The more you can have your face near your baby's face, um, the better that is for wiring them up for social connection. Faces communicate a lot of things to other people. It communicates emotional state, whether you're sad, happy, angry, disgusted. Um, and that's helpful because if somebody else is afraid, maybe you should be afraid. If somebody else is disgusted, maybe you should be disgusted. It also conveys interest. What are you interested in? If um, I am interested in something, maybe you should be interested in it too. And it also conveys trustworthiness. The eyes in particular tell us a lot. Uh, one thing about the eyes, about human eyes, is that the white draws attention. If you've ever seen a gorilla at the zoo, gorillas have um, a dark sclera. The sclera, remember, is that white part. Remember, sclera scary. Uh, the white part around the pretty iris, that flower, uh, flowery part. Um, so when gorillas have a dark part around the iris, then it is much harder for them to know where other gorillas are looking. The white part emphasizes the eye, and so we can see very easily uh, because of that high contrast where other people are looking, what their attention has been drawn to. So um, this evolution from a, a dark sclera to a white sclera has helped uh, humans to coordinate uh, their intentions, to communicate, um, and to behave as a social group. Young children pretty quickly learn how to make good judgments about who is trustworthy and who is not. Typically around uh, six months of age, they begin to crawl and they begin to really reference their caregiver to try to figure out who's safe and who's not. So if they meet somebody new, they'll look at their caregiver and the caregiver will either say, yes, go ahead, or mm, no, stay back. And that's part of the way that they start to learn that. All right, let's think about attributions. So there are, um, an attribution is a belief that you develop to explain human behaviors and characteristics as well as situations. 
So they are uh, beliefs that we develop to explain behavior and characteristics and beliefs we develop to explain situations. There are two types of attributions I want you to be aware of. One is personal and one is situational. We could make a personal attribution for the way that somebody is. We could say that um, this is related to somebody's internal characteristics. It's their traits, it's their ability, it's their mood, it's their effort. So we might say, uh, Joe won the, um, the scholarship because he was so smart, or Joe won the scholarship because he worked really hard, or Joe won the scholarship because he had a lot of talent. Um, but a situational attribution is one where we're saying that something has happened because of something external to the person. So we might say Joe was um, did not win the scholarship because he was unlucky, or Joe didn't win the scholarship because he um, had uh, because uh, the committee knew uh, that it was him and they didn't like him. Uh, we might say that somebody was late because of the weather or the traffic. Um, so I, uh, was, um, supposed to meet somebody at, at the water park. I had some extra tickets and I'd offered them and this, uh, acquaintance of mine and her two kids were supposed to come and I didn't know her very well, but I was happy to share my tickets and she wanted to. So we were supposed to meet at the gate cause I had to get her and her kids in. I'd actually physically be there. We were supposed to meet at 10 when the water park opened. And so we waited around at the gate for like 20, 30 minutes and they never came. And I contacted her and she said, oh, I'm sorry, we're running late. My kids didn't do their chores and so we're a little bit behind. And I thought, wow, okay, I understand wanting to teach your children to do their chores, but you're putting now me and my children out. So we, um, my kids were too young to go in the water by themselves, so I couldn't like send them into the park and wait at the gate for her. So we went into the park and I tried to go into the water, but I, you know, I, how do I have my phone in the water and how do I keep track of them? And um, it was all just a disaster. She came finally, it was like two or three hours later. <laughs> I was so mad. I was furious. And do you think I was making a personal attribution or a situational attribution? Was I saying it was because of her and who she was? Or was I saying it was because of external situations that were out of her control? If you guess personal, you would be correct. Um, we tend to make personal attributions um, when other people are doing something we don't like, and we tend to ignore the situational. So I tended to say at that time that she was um, rude and not thinking about other people and not thinking about the impact she was having on me and my kids. I could have instead said, well, you know, it was the situation. Her kids didn't do what they were supposed to do um, and, and blamed it on something external, but I didn't. And I still think I was right, <laughs> of course. So personal situations and situational um, are explanation for why events or actions occur refer to people's internal characteristics, such as abilities, traits, moods, or efforts. Mom yelled at me this weekend because she is so mean. Or your friend didn't show up on time because she's thoughtless. Situational attributions are where we refer to external events, such as weather, luck, accidents, or other people's actions. Mom yelled at me this weekend because she is stressed out from her busy time at work or your friend didn't show up on time because she was disciplining her kids. Those are situational. So this leads us into one of the um, fundamental errors that we make in our thinking. We make a lot of errors in our thinking. Um, thin slices of behavior uh, are generally pretty good at giving us information about who a person is, but I know you can think of times when you misjudge somebody. All of us can, of course. Um, so one of those ways in which we make an error is called the fundamental attribution error. Sometimes it's also called actor-observer bias. And this is where the observer, the person watching other people, tends to think that the actor's behavior is caused by internal characteristics and they ignore the situation. So if I'm watching this situation happen, this is me or you, we'll say this is you, and you're watching a waiter at a restaurant and he dumps some wine glasses on the ground, you might say, oh my gosh, he is so clumsy. Um, he's, he's clumsy and uh, not adept and not um, able to hold things properly. But that is um, a personal attribution rather than situational. What we tend to do is we tend to ignore situational things like the slippery floor that might have actually caused it. 
So we tend to make personal attributions um, uh, of other people. So the tendency to overestimate the degree to which the characteristics of an individual are the cause and to underestimate the involvement of situational factors. Think about if you're driving on, down, you know, I-35W, right? And somebody cuts you off. What are you going to say immediately? He is such a jerk. He's a terrible driver. Actually, that happened to me this morning. I was taking my daughter to work and I was, the road was so busy and I was trying to merge into the left lane so I could uh, turn to the high school. And this car was not wanting to let me in and it just kept going and going, even though I had turned on my, my signal. And <laughs> I may have said something uh, a little bit rude about this driver. And then as that driver went past me, I realized it was my kid's band director. And so at that point, I did not think to myself, oh my gosh, this person is a horrible person, a terrible driver, because he's not, he's an awesome person. And so then I began to think, oh, in fact, I turned immediately to my daughter and I said, oh, you know, so-and-so must be late. Um, so as soon as I knew who it was, I was very willing to make a situational attribution. And then I was less willing to make that personal attribution. But when I thought it was some random stranger, I was very willing to make a personal attribution and say, he's just being a jerk. Okay. So um, on the other hand, we will tend to say that when we have done something wrong, we will say that was situational. I failed the test uh, not because I didn't study, but because my teacher is bad or my teacher didn't tell me what was going to be on the test, something like that. Okay, let's think about a second out of three um, attribution errors that we make. So first of all, we've got fundamental attribution error, actor-observer bias. Second, we have the just world hypothesis. And this is where the observer tends to think that people get what they deserve. So here's, here's you and me, we're the observer, and we're watching somebody, and this is uh, the manager of the restaurant. Um, um, I guess this is the, this is still the waiter and his boss over here says, you're fired. Um, and so we think, well, he must be a terrible waiter because he got fired. We tend to think that people get what they deserve. He got fired. He must have deserved it. He must be terrible at his job. And we tend to ignore other possible reasons, such as the manager would rather hire a friend instead, or maybe the manager just didn't like this guy for some reason. Um, we tend to ignore situational stuff. Um, so this is, again, the tendency to believe the world is a fair place and people generally get what they deserve. Okay. So, um, sorry, I thought I had a third one. I used to have one. We'll just leave it at that. Um, so fundamental attribution error and the just world hypothesis. So be careful of those. I'll see you in the next video. We'll talk about stereotyping.